So, Mayor, the ongoing street violence damaged not only downtown physically, but also Portland's reputation and brand. Investment dollars are drying up. Businesses are moving out. People who live here say they don't want to come downtown. Is downtown dying? I have tried it at every step to treat Portlanders like adults. And that means being honest with them about the challenges we've faced over the last year in particular around safety, around homelessness, livability issues like the, the litter or the graffiti that we see on some buildings, but also give people some hope, some optimism that the priorities that we have, not only in the mayor's office, but the city council at large, and the programs we're putting into place are programs that are gonna bear fruit going forward. And so, no, I don't believe Portland is dying. I think we've gone through a very, very difficult period. Uh, we still have a lot of challenges ahead of us, but uh, this isn't the time to fold up the tent and walk away. This is the time to actually engage. And we've created five action tables that give people who want to participate, who want to help, who have a stake in the future of this community to really put their shoulder to the wheel with us to work on cleaning up the city, improving public safety, and making sure that this city is ready to open as more and more people are able to come back downtown as the vaccinations continue to permeate the community. People say they see the boarded up storefronts downtown, they see all the for lease signs. We're now approaching close to 20% vacancy rate in downtown, which is historic. If I'm a business owner, why do I wanna invest in downtown if I'm afraid my windows are gonna constantly be smashed, they're gonna be vandalized. How is the city investing in me if I'm investing in downtown specifically? Yeah, and that's, that's a fair question. The city is investing in downtown. And I wanna be clear, we're not on an island here at City Hall. We work with our business districts throughout the community. We work with our downtown businesses. We work with our neighborhood associations. We work with, with folks in the neighborhood who really are concerned and want to see the city of Portland's image uh, restored. And I certainly am for, you know, front and center in wanting to make that happen. And so what I tell people is, uh, yes, it's been a difficult year. There is no question that we've been featured prominently, particularly in Fox News and Breitbart and other areas that uh, want to uh, really push this image that Portland is dying or it's falling off a cliff or it's beyond hope. And I, again, I just don't believe that and the people that I talk to who are investing capital in this community don't believe it either. And just to give you a couple of examples, uh, in fact, there are businesses moving here and expanding. Target just announced that while they're downsizing their store downtown, uh, that's in large measure because they're building a larger one in the Hollywood district. The you know, largest commercial real estate development project in this city, which is the Ritz-Carlton multi-use facility. It's one of the largest real estate development projects on the West Coast. It's moving ahead and their leadership has committed to me that they are still very confident in the future of this city. We've of course heard of other stores and other businesses that are seeking to open here. Foot traffic is up. Uh, travel and tourism is still on the skids, of course, but I'm sure that uh, as, uh, as um, more and more people get vaccinated and we get closer to herd immunity, you're going to start to see more people engaging in travel and tourism activities as well. So I, I think we've had a, an extremely challenging year under COVID, uh, but I am also seeing the green shoots of recovery. And that's, that's the momentum we want to continue to build upon going forward. Are you concerned with the statistics that show outside investment into Portland has really dried up? You know, we were, according to the Urban Land Institute, we were the third most desirable city in 2017, and then we dropped to 66 out of 80. Does that concern you even in the short term here? I, I think it, it should definitely give us pause, um, but we, let's, let's keep in mind that we're part of a national trend here. Uh, if you look at businesses that have been pulled in New York City or Chicago or LA or Seattle or San Francisco, uh, Portland interestingly wasn't on that list, but 
of business leaders in those cities four months ago said they either would leave or were considering leaving those cities. Does that sound familiar? Uh, it sure as heck does to me, but the reality is as we come out of the pandemic, as the economy strengthens, we're already seeing certain sectors be very strong, we are in fact seeing more capital investments in urban areas. And so the prognosticators who um, somewhat gleefully were putting the final nails in the coffin of urban America are so far proving to be wrong. It, again, it's been a tough, tough year for us, but of course it's been a tough year. We, we're coming out of a global pandemic. Our economy effectively shut down. And so now we have to lay that table for the recovery. That means cleaning up our city, the litter, the graffiti. That means making sure we have adequate police resources in the community to ensure people's public safety. That means making sure that we continue to address the homeless crisis that has absolutely been exacerbated by the COVID crisis as we reduced not only the services that were available, but also the camp cleanup programs that were in place prior to the pandemic. All of those things are coming back online now and people are already telling me they're beginning to see that difference. We're not done by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but anybody who, who is claiming that Portland is dead, I think is going to uh, be betting in exactly the wrong direction. This is the more sensitive question. Everyone we talk to, business leaders, those that support you and uh, building owners in, in downtown all said during the height of the protest, there was a void of leadership, a lack of leadership, not just from you, but from the entire city council and that you didn't move with a stronger hand to condemn the violence sooner and the destruction sooner. How do you answer those critics? I completely disagree. I have been very consistent, very clear. I don't know how many press conferences I've held over the last year, but it's a lot. At each and every one of those press conferences, I've stood up and I've said exactly the same thing. I've said I support the right to nonviolent demonstration. I understand why people are angry and frustrated and traumatized by the deaths of black men like George Floyd and more recently uh, Duante Wright. I understand why people are traumatized by that. I understand why people are taking to the streets and demanding racial justice and social equity and common sense police reform. I get that. But I've also been very, very clear that when the line gets crossed, and it leads to criminal destruction or violence. I've been very clear, that is not protest. That's criminal activity. And I've said that we need the resources and the tools to be able to hold those individuals accountable for their actions. And that's been a consistent message out of me for the better part of a year. But do you think some of those tools were lacking? It seems like some of the people responsible for this violence are repeat offenders. Yeah, That I they're agree. released, they do it again, they're released. The message from okay, well, the stop, stop right there. When you say they're released, that's, that's not me. That's not the city council. Release sounds like you're talking about jail. So they've been arrested. That's, that's my bailiwick. I'm the police commissioner. Uh, but what we've seen is people are arrested. Then the question is, where are the prosecutions? Why aren't they being sentenced? Where are the jails? That's not the city of Portland. That's, that's other parts of the criminal justice system. I'm responsible for my part of the system and I'll be held accountable for my part of the system. And that's arguing you know, on the city council for the tools, the resources, the training that the Portland Police Bureau needs to be able to do its job in a very difficult environment. So are you dissatisfied with how the district attorney handled especially in the early days of the protests, some of those arrests? I don't think we, I, I'm not gonna put it on the DA. You know, I, I talk in we, when I'm holding people accountable, I'm not gonna sit here and point fingers at the DA or the courts or, or you know, the judges uh, or others. I'm gonna talk about me. Uh, I think we did not do enough to coordinate with other law enforcement agencies and the community early on. On one hand, on the community, engaging with those who are engaged in nonviolent demonstration, to have them work with us to self-police their events. And then on the law enforcement side, we needed better coordination early on with our federal partners, with our state partners, uh, with our, our county and local law enforcement partners. There really wasn't good coordination you know, from, from the state level all the way down. And I, I feel that's changed. I feel like we've really improved that. 
And in fact, just yesterday, I met with the governor, the state police, the county uh, law enforcement officials, the, the Portland Police Bureau, the Gresham Police Bureau. I, I feel like we've learned a thing or two over the course of the last year in terms of coordination. Let's talk about the, um, the homeless and the, and the trash situation. First, the, the trash situation and the homeless situation. When you drive in on Interstate 84, maybe you're coming up from the south on I-205, especially when you're coming down I-5 from the north from Washington, and you see the tents, the piles of garbage and filth and the graffiti, how does that make you feel as mayor? It breaks my heart, not, not as mayor, but as somebody who was born and raised here, who's lived my whole life here. Um, those right-of-ways are an embarrassment to all of us. It's an affront to our sensibilities as Oregonians. And uh, I, I want to be clear, every one of the right-of-ways you just mentioned, uh, the litter, the graffiti, that's not the city, that is the state. Those are ODOT right-of-ways and that is their responsibility and I have loudly advocated for more activity on those right-of-ways. The homeless problem, that is on us. You know, understanding it's a bigger societal issue, uh, but uh, you know, we do have an obligation to those who are living outside, particularly those who, who have mental health or substance abuse issues or domestic violence uh, issues in their life, I do believe we have a moral obligation to help connect those individuals with whatever services they need to get off and stay off the streets. And the people of, of this region agree with me. They, they just voted uh, for the Here Together ballot measure. There'll be $100 million a year more coming into the city of Portland through the county, through Multnomah County, for the purpose of connecting people to mental health or substance abuse or other types of issues. So that, alongside our, our ongoing efforts to increase the amount of shelter place, space uh, and uh, alternatives to people living on the sidewalk or living in our public right-of-ways, all of those things are now in a position to come together and make a difference. When we talk about the homeless issue, it seems that Portland is reluctant to try ideas that have worked in other cities. We sometimes, I think, put the blinders on here thinking we have the unique Portland solution to things. But I'm talking about cities like San Diego with their Alpha Project in Austin, Texas. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Um, in fact, a lot of the ideas that, that you just described are actually being done here. The Austin, Texas model, I actually went out and took a look at that. I visited it. I spoke to the people who ran it. So, no, I, I don't agree with you because a lot of the ideas that you just mentioned are, in fact, already being done. Not all of them by government independently. For example, the Bybee Lake Center at the old Wapato Jail facility, that's very similar to the program in Austin, Texas. And I had a chance to go out and visit with the people who run that program and see how it operates. And I'm very bullish on the Bybee Lake Center. That's providing now over 100 new treatment beds to get the chronically homeless off the streets, help them get better and help them get back into the community. We also have two navigation centers. And these are very similar to what's going on in San Diego. Uh, they're not just shelters. When people come in, they are navigated towards whatever services they need to get off the streets. For some, it's substance abuse. For others, it's mental health services. Others still just need a job, and they need to get their job skills back. And our two navigation centers, the one in the Pearl District and the one in Southeast Portland, help people do that. We've also created innovative community-based models, like the Kenton's Women's Village. The city council just passed a new zoning, or is in the process of passing a new zoning ordinance that'll help create flexibility for us to create sanctioned, managed shelter sites on publicly owned properties, as well as potentially properties owned by churches or businesses or other institutions in appropriate areas that want to help us with that. So I, I believe we are being flexible, we are being innovative, we're listening to what other people are doing around the country and we're taking the best ideas and we're putting them into place right here. You have embraced, I remember talking to you a few years ago, the, the, the Harbor of Hope idea and you were an early supporter of Wapato, but it seemed like the county was working opposite. Deborah Kafori didn't like that idea and she initially didn't like Harbor of Hope. She wanted to do things the way we currently doing. Do you find yourself sometimes at odds on the homeless issue with Multnomah County? This is a democracy, and uh, I am in a weak mayor form of government. You know, I, I have 20% of the votes on this city council, 
And when it comes to issues like homelessness, uh, it, it's not just the city, it's the county, it's the metro government, it's the state government. And so there's a lot of collaboration and a lot of give and take that has to happen there. And yes, there are times when it's frustrating, particularly uh, on homelessness and on public safety. On homelessness, I'm a bit of an outlier because I believe that we have an obligation to take resources today and have a FEMA-like response to getting as many people as quickly and humanely as possible off the streets and into alternatives. And that includes shelter for me. There's a lot of people who disagree with me on that and say, nope, um, let them be where they are until we have housing. But that could be years after they die of exposure on the streets or die as a result of not being connected to services like mental health or substance abuse services. So that's an ongoing tension that, that we have in this community. Uh, there's also the question of camp remediation. This is one of the most controversial issues around homelessness in our community. I support the work of our Urban Camping Impact Program. And when they identify campsites through objective measurements that are problematic because they create public health or public safety or environmental hazards, I support cleaning up those camps and moving people into safer, uh, healthier alternative scenarios. But I, I have people out front of City Hall virtually every day telling me to stop the quote sweeps unquote. So it's very controversial. And, and if you're conflict avoidant, wading into this battle about whether or not we should remediate the uh, most egregious campsites or not can be uncomfortable. But for me, I'm comfortable. I believe we should remediate those campsites that create a public health, a public safety, or an environmental hazard, not just for the people living there, but for the public at large. Maybe this figures into what you just said, but uh, Bob McElroy, who runs Alpha Project down in San Diego, when I was there a few years ago visiting that, Bob told me, he said one problem in Portland, he said, was that they confuse compassion with tolerance when it comes to getting people off the street. It is not compassionate to let someone shoot up drugs or live in filth on the street, but he said there's this tolerant thing in Portland where they confuse that with compassion. I, I agree. Uh, you know, there, there is a very fine line between compassion and enabling. And it's really hard for, for well-meaning, moral people in the city of Portland, progressives, to come to the conclusion that sometimes the best love that you can give someone is tough love. And it, for me, it's easy. I grew up in a family where I've seen addiction up close and personal. I know what it means to bottom out. I know what it takes to get somebody to cross over that line to seek treatment, whether it's substance abuse or mental health or other types of treatment. And I believe our government should be compassionate, but we should also establish community standards and uphold those standards. And we did that not subjectively, but objectively through our urban camping impact program. And if there's a campsite and somebody complains about it, they'll go out there and they use their 10 objective measures. Either the camp is compliant or it's not. And if it's not, then we post it. We give people plenty of time to find an alternative, safer location. We send social workers in often to try and connect people to services. Uh, and then we remediate the camp. I support that strategy. As mayor, how are you going to lead this city out of this time of crisis? The way I'm gonna help lead this city out of this crisis is by bringing the city to the table. It's really important to understand this can't be a top-down strategy where I tell the business community how it's gonna be, or I tell neighborhood associations how it's gonna be, or I tell people in the community how it's gonna be. It's the opposite. They're telling me, and these five action tables that we've created around uh, helping to clean up the city, around working with small businesses, uh, another action table around safety, uh, have already generated great ideas. The business round table, for example, we've been working really hard to change, to streamline, and speed up the permitting process for small businesses that want to reopen in the city. We've begun the process of creating an online marketplace 
for small businesses that, that aren't able to reopen due to COVID yet, but they still want to stay in business and generate revenue and support their employees. Uh, the Clean and Green Streets initiative that's uh, being led by our partner Solve. Um, we're putting a lot of funding into that program and we're going to have neighborhood associations and faith groups and business organizations. They're already working with us to do neighborhood by neighborhood cleanups of this city. We need a deep clean and then it's the obligation of city government to keep it clean. So I'm making sure in my budget process that government has the resources it needs to keep the litter picked up, to make sure that graffiti is abated, to make sure that we continue to support our camp intervention program for those most egregious camps that really do need to be remediated, remediated. Uh, and we're gonna keep doing that. A lot of the businesses we talked to said, you know, the trash in the homeless was a problem before the pandemic, that the city wasn't doing a very good job of, that we were just managing it. So how can you assure them that we're going to do more than manage it, we're really going to get it under control. So one of the reasons I brought former Mayor Sam Adams onto my team was I needed a project manager who understands the complexities of government. How many bureaus are engaged in something as simple as litter collection? You know, PBOT has its right of way, the Parks Bureau has its right of way, uh, the Water Bureau has their right of way. Um, I needed somebody who could come in and rationalize this project and work with me to engage community organizations like Solve, neighborhood associations, and others to create a comprehensive livability strategy for the city of Portland. And we're doing that. And we're already seeing that program underway. Uh, Sam and I went out a couple of weekends ago and we actually helped clean up an illegal dump site. So we, we're picking up mattresses and old barbecues and tires and everything else just as a trial for that. And it was very effective. Uh, and we're also getting our jurisdictional partners like Metro to reestablish their illegal dump site cleanup program, which they'd suspended. So we're working with others. Uh, I still want to put pressure on ODOT to clean up I-84 and I-205 and I-405. We need to see those public right-of-ways cleared too. It's not just going to be the city of Portland. We're going to push others to work with us with this mutual goal of cleaning up our city so that it's presentable, not just for other people who might want to come here, but for ourselves, so that we have pride in our community. Can you tell the citizens of Portland with confidence that they're safe when they see record number of officers leaving the police bureau, dollars not being spent on police, dollars actually being cut. So with less officers, they have to be reassigned. That cuts into response times in neighborhoods when it comes to crime in my particular neighborhood, what would you tell folks? Well, first, first of all, I, I don't believe in lying to people. I believe, again, in treating people like adults and telling them the truth. The fact of the matter is we are under-policed in the city of Portland. I hear the calls for reform. I understand that the police need to evolve and that they need to improve the way they police and they need to be more accountable to the public they serve. But I still believe we are under-policed in terms of the resources that we have deployed on the streets today. We have a record gun violence and homicide problem in this city. And I was not able to get additional dollars to support my focused intervention team that will work to disrupt those cycles of violence, that will be engaged in proactive activities to address gun violence. Uh, I had to find those resources internally, which is fine. I will prove to my colleagues on the city council that we can do this program and be accountable and have community oversight, that we will be transparent in our collection of data. But when it comes to getting dollars for police officers in Portland, it is an uphill battle. I will not lie to you, but I'm gonna keep fighting for it because I believe that ultimately will ensure the public safety. That's also you know, alongside efforts we're doing to figure out where the police shouldn't be involved. We funded the, the Portland Street response because the police aren't necessarily the right people to show up for a mental health crisis. So let's fund the Portland Street response, which pairs uh, an EMT and a social worker who can go out there and de-escalate situations and navigate people towards services. And in our parks, we don't necessarily, necessarily need police officers, armed trained officers. We can have four, uh, park rangers do that work instead. 
and I stood up what was called the Public Safety Support Specialist Program in the Portland Police Bureau. They are unarmed police officers who can do a lot of the ambassadorial work and administrative work that currently police officers are doing even though they're already in limited supply in this community. So we're going to be better, we're going to be smarter, we're going to be more accountable in terms of how we serve this public. But we cannot mistake those needs with defunding the police. We, we still need the police folks, and we need to train them. We need to help them be as good as they can be, but I am concerned that we, we do not have enough officers on the street given the growing size of this community.